Sewing real or faux leather can look a little bit scary before you start, but it's such a fun material to work with and using these tips you will see how easy it's actually to sew with. In this video I will share my 10 tips on working with leather and faux leather and at the second half of the video I will show you up close my latest creation which is the skirt that I made using faux leather. This video is created in partnership with Organ Needles, needle industry experts. With over 100 years of expertise in needle making industry, organ needles have you covered no matter what task you have on hand and what material you're working with, even if it's leather. I personally been sewing with organ needles for eight years or maybe more. I use it in all of my machines and it's very easy to recommend them because I work with them constantly and their quality speaks for themselves. Now let's get started with tip number one. My number one tip is to test the seam before you start. So contrary to woven or knit fabrics, leather fabric is not self-healing, meaning that once you made the stitches, the holes are permanent. Every faux leather is very different, so usually you will have to play a little bit with the tension settings, with the length stitch, with the thread, with the needle, to really get the right seam for that particular fabric. So before you jump into sewing your garment, just take a little scrap of that same leather or faux leather and do a few rows of stitches and see how you like the quality of the seam you're getting. Second tip is use the right needle suitable for sewing leather. So leather needles are very different from universal needles. The difference is visible with the naked eye. Thanks to unique knife-shaped needle point, organ needles create a stable sized shape holes in the leather, making it very suitable to sew leather or suede materials. Organ Needles Leather Needle comes in several different sizes, 90, 100, 110, so select the one which works best with the material that you have on hand. Third tip is to use a suitable thread. Now again, same as with needles, all-purpose polyester threads are not ideal with sewing leather because it's very thick material and you want to use a thicker thread which is not easy to tear and it will last much longer and create a more durable seam. The difference between the all-purpose and the leather suitable thread is visible with the naked eye. That thread is clearly much more thicker. This is why you're using higher size needle to follow it, right? And when you're sewing leather using this thread, it creates such a beautiful seam. Threads suitable for sewing leather are very easy to find in many sewing supply stores and they come in different colors, so choose the one that fits your garment best. Fourth tip is to use a Teflon or walking foot. Now because of the surface of the leather, it can be quite difficult to sew with the standard foot. So you want to use either a Teflon foot, which will glide much easier and much more nicely on this surface, or you want to use a walking foot, which is ideal working with difficult fabrics. Tip number five is lengthen the stitch. Usually when sewing leather, you want to sew on a slightly longer stitch. So for example, usually I'm sewing woven fabrics using a three millimeter stitch, but when I'm sewing leather or faux leather, I'm using a four millimeter stitch. The result is just more beautiful and the seam is a bit more durable this way. But again, this is why we're doing test stitches. You can try several different lengths and see which one you like best. Also, so today I'm wearing a dress made using my pattern Marie. If you like this dress and you would like to make your own version, I will link down below my Etsy pattern shop. Tip number six is use wonder pins instead of regular pins or base stitching. Now I'll tell you a friend, I don't like using wonder pins and the only exception that I make is when I'm sewing with leather because the standard pins or the base stitch will leave markings. So this is what you want to avoid. So use the pins or if you don't have those kind of pins, you can get like paper clips that will perform the same way. And I've seen a lot of seamstresses using them. So tip number seven and something that you might be thinking, can you press 
faux leather? And the answer is yes. However, there are a few nuances. You have to use a very low heat setting. You want to press from the wrong side of the fabric and you want to use an additional fabric between the iron and the leather. This way you can press the annoying wrinkles in the faux leather. However, very important note, do not use steam because steam will activate the glue in the leather and it will just simply ruin it and you won't be able to fix it. So don't use steam, use low heat, press from the wrong side of the garment and use a cloth between the iron and the leather. Also contrary to woven fabrics, even if you press the leather, it won't stay as neatly pressed. So don't worry about it. I just personally like to press if there are like very visible wrinkles in the material that I want to get rid of, but I'm not pressing the seams themselves. Tip number eight and something that you might be also thinking, do you need to finish the raw edges of the material? The answer is no, you don't need to finish the raw edges of the leather because it is not fraying. However, as I mentioned in previous point, you are not really able to neatly press the seams as you go. So to lock them in place once you make the seam, you can either top stitch it or use glue to kind of lock the seam allowance in place. I personally like doing top stitching more. It's a more neat finish for me, but that's my own preference and using glue is completely acceptable. So you can try both methods and see which one works best for you. Number tip is cut on single layer. So materials like leather can be quite thick and tough on the scissors and you want to protect your good scissors. So cut on single layer instead of the fold. And this way you will get more accurate cutting results as well. Last tip number 10 is if you want to mark very accurate lines on the top of the leather, you can use a special marking tool for this purpose. It creates a very sharp line, which is later easily wipeable. I use it to mark the lines to install my exposed zipper. This is not a must have tool. Maybe you can find another workaround that works for you. For me personally, the price for this tool was like two euros. So it wasn't that expensive. And I thought, you know, that it was a great solution for my problem. So I got it. And if I will be able to find this marking tool online, I will link it in the description box. So here are my top 10 tips on how to sew leather and faux leather. And in the beginning of the video, I promised to show you my latest creation very up close. So here we go. So this is the skirt that I made using faux leather. To lock those seam allowances in place, I chose to do a top stitching. And when you are doing top stitching, you can select two options, either to top stitch open, meaning that you're opening the seam just like you would press it. But instead of pressing, you just do top stitches from both sides of the seam. Alternatively, you can push both seam allowances to one side and just top stitch on one side, which is exactly what I did in this particular case. For the thread, I used a suitable leather thread and this is how the seam looks up close. I really enjoyed the result. It looks very satisfying, especially up close. Now for the hemming, I've seen several different examples. Sometimes people do single fold. I personally like to do double fold. It just looks a bit neater for me, for me personally, for my taste. And also I think it adds a nice weight to the bottom of of the skirt and it just lays a little bit better than the single fold. Now for the closure, I opted to do a exposed zipper. And one of the things when selecting hardware is that it's very difficult to find a matching color for the leather and the zipper. So I kind of had to compromise on it and I used a sand color zipper, but it does look quite okay. And I really like how it turned out. It was a very satisfying yet very intensive place to sew. Now, because the 
faux leather has a lot of stretch for the lining I also chose lining that has quite a good stretch now to sew lining I switched from the leather needle back to the organ needles universal needle and sew the lining to my skirt I also wanted to add a little Easter egg to my skirt and I added one detail which is this adorable little kitten embroidery this is something that no one else beside me will see but I just really like the idea of hiding that kind of little detail inside of the garment and I think it adds a very nice touch when I'm doing embroidery I like to use spray adhesive to temporarily bond the material and the backing together however when you're doing that kind of embroidery you do need to use a special needle which has anti-glue needles and every time I do embroidery using this technique I'm choosing organ needles anti-glue needle thanks to the special coating of this needle the glue does not stick to the needle when doing embroidery with a spray adhesives so yeah this is my skirt it's a self drafted skirt and I really love how it turned out I think that it will be perfect for the spring season thank you for watching today's video if you enjoyed it please you hit the like button so that I know you enjoy this content and I can continue creating similar videos in the future. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!